Okay. And while we're getting started, thank you, Brandon and Dan and others for reading our charter. Um, it's very exciting. It says probably nothing that ever anybody hasn't read before. Um, but, uh, but we are going through the process of formalizing our governance docs according to how the uh, TOC wanted to see them written. So, um, so there's a pull request out there for the charter that um, folks can take a look at. And um, we're just going, I'm going to address the, uh, the, the open questions and we'll see if we can get that uh, sent over to Liz and for this week. Yeah, it's looking good, Sarah. Thanks for uh, pulling that together. I, I know, um, you know, I, I personally feel like I've, um, you know, gone through that and, uh, you know, written that and, and, and uh, you know, done that probably um, six, seven times in the last uh, year and a half. <laughs> but, uh, you know, each time we iterate over it, uh, it gets better and better. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with with uh, you know how that's shaping up. So Dan, if you'll facilitate, I'm happy to scrap. Okay, great. One of the scrap. If we have somebody else too. Great. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, I, I, I know there was a bunch of, uh, of you know, activity last week, so we'll, we'll go into that. But, you know, let, let's, let's go, uh, you know, around, around the room and, uh, um, you know, just check in. Um, you know, I, I've had, uh, you know, really just insanely uh, busy uh, beginning of May. Um, you know, and my, my availability has been you know, pretty challenged. So, you know, really uh, appreciate all of the effort that, that Sarah's uh, been able to, to take up and, and drive things forward. It's, it's been an opportune uh, time for me uh, to, to, to have that support and uh, really appreciate it. Um, Sarah, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, so I have um, mostly been doing this admin trivia. Um, I did go to the Internet Identity Workshop, which is why I missed our last session. And that um, was probably, there's a, a, probably a lot of the notes would be interesting to folks here. There's a lot of talk about self-sovereign identity. This is, of course, a user identity thing. Um, and there was somebody there from the Linux Foundation um, who felt that this was going, that using self-sovereign identity because it allows you to just get an identity without implying that the user, you know, is beholden to one or more of these companies, um, then sort of helps with, and the, the way that they have um, these identity documents that are attached to your identity um, kind of unlocks the, uh, uh, git commit signing. So he's hmm. been working on, and I guess there's a group of people now working on how can we in a resilient way sign commits and have a commit history that is um, verifiable. And so, um, so there's a group talking about that, which I think is very related to some of our work. It's, you know, like we've talked about it being a dependency for in toto, um, in not necessarily a dependency, but like one of those things you probably should be doing. Um, and um, so anyhow, the internet identity stuff was pretty interesting. And um, I can also drop, I'll drop in the notes. They're very good about keeping notes. It's an unconference that happens twice a year. Nice. So, um, and then uh, Justin Cormack and I have been meeting to go through the in total assessment with the goal of writing up a summary, which then unearthed more open questions. <laughs> and um, thank you, Brandon, who has joined our security assessment team 
and is kind of helping us um, uh, vet that stuff and you know kick the tires and try to figure out like how do we articulate this format of what we want to say and um, and we just had a meeting with Santiago and Justin Capos to kind of go through the open questions that we unearthed and um, so um, so that security assessment team I'll also let Justin Capos talk about that I um, I asked even though we haven't been voted in as co-chairs I'm sort of we're all acting as if I mean we're still the safe sure. working group I guess <laughs> <laughs> right so I asked Justin if he would um, facilitate the security assessment so um, awesome. that he agreed to do that but I wanted to bring that to the group and let people know that I've asked him to step into that role um, great and then I opened a whole bunch of issues with kind of things that are we're doing that aren't yet PRs that's kind of my long-winded update. Wonderful. Um, Robert? I think if you're on the phone, um, what is it, star six to unmute? I can also unmute you. I don't know who dialed in. I'll skip over Robert for a second. Let me go down to the next, uh, um, Ash. Uh, hi, so I've been working on the OPA write-up assessment and I submitted a draft for that. Um, I, Justin had some questions which I've tried to cover in the doc itself. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, let's go from there. Great. Um, we'll probably have a, you know, a little bit more discussion on that, uh, as an agenda item. Um, but I want to send it to check Ash, um, would, do you, do you think we'll be ready for, for next week? Can I put it on the schedule? Uh, yeah, we can put it for next Wednesday. Yep. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Ash. Yeah, sure. Um, Justin? Yeah, uh, I've mostly been busy with the um, with the assessments that were discussed, both uh, getting things together with OPA and also responding to the in toto things. Um, there has also been a bunch of uh, standards discussion around things. How do you do specs? And also IEEE ISTO uh, standardization of Uptane is proceeding, which is a tough variant. Uh, so I actually presented in their member meeting about um, some things related to that. So, yep. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Brendan? I also, Justin, I put in a, I put in a, a, um, a status for you, which is uh, the whiteboard stuff that you did around the, the process, which I, I stuck into an open issue, so. Okay, great. All right, Brendan? so, yeah, um, mostly I would say DockerCon, and then we, we met up um, um, with Sarah, Justin, Capos, Justin, Conmac, and talked, talked about the security assessment stuff. Um, so pretty much whatever Sarah, Sarah and Justin said just now. <laughs> great, great. Okay, and Robert? Hi, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I'm in a pretty loud location, so I'll probably go on mute pretty quick. You bet. Uh, anyway, I've just been uh, uh, reviewing the OPA docs and uh, submitting some comments, as well as uh, putting some thoughts on uh, issues on how to structure kind of the assessment review. And it was good meeting folks up in San Francisco. Right on. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, I think that that transitions into uh, you know DockerCon uh, recap. Do you want to uh, kick off some of that? Well, I actually wasn't at the DockerCon; <laughs> just the uh, just the meetup at the bar after. So, nice. others okay. who were actually at DockerCon, that'd be probably better for them. Yeah, so I can share a little bit about DockerCon from my side at least. Um, so 
I, I, there were quite a few interesting um, presentations on security. Um, Netflix did one on what they're using for security. Um, there was um, uh, Justin Capos did one on um, the Integrity Pipeline. Uh, which you can probably talk more about. I did one yes. on the encrypted containers. Um, and there were a couple of other security talks, you know, um, tangentially around Istio and things like that. Um, I spoke to a couple of um, people around, um, it seemed like there was a big theme around um, auditors not knowing how to do security audits for container platforms. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so it seems like they, they they spend a lot of time just trying to explain to them how it works and what they should be looking out for, and it's it's taking a lot out of them because they keep changing auditors every time every time they send in a, a, uh, an audit. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a it's a good conference, um, and meeting up to get dinner was really great. I enjoyed that. Right on. Um, was the, the, the security assessment challenges uh, a um, end user challenge or is that also, so, you know, uh, Docker has product offering around that, um, but are people adopting that product offering and looking for independent solutions? You mean the auditing challenges? Right, right. The, the, um, the Docker's having, or the folks in the Docker. Oh, this, this one is, yeah, so so the the people I believe that are a bit behind on this are the people that are coming from the NIST side. Okay. Um, and it's not so much about um, the solutions they do, it's kind of like how they audit the process, what the evidence that they need to collect. Right, okay. Um, these things are not clear to them, and so there's a there's a huge learning curve uh, for the auditors. Got it. Yeah. Is there anybody, you know, that that the ecosystem around uh, NIST is uh, an area that that I I'm uh, particularly interested in. Uh, finding collaborators. Uh, did, did, was there anyone there that that uh, we could potentially invite to the SIG? Um, let me check through um, <clears throat> my contact list. I think there was someone that I talked to. Uh, one guy was from Equifax. Another one was from a company which is kind of like Venmo. Um, mm -hmm. And someone from Fidelity. Uh, let me dig up those names and then I'll send them a, a pointer to this as well. Great, great. Yeah, and you know, just looking looking for the the right contacts that can carry back that that challenge uh and you know see if we can partner with them uh, to get them the insight that they're looking for and to help coalesce so you know if this is coalescing around a, a standard you know we're, we're coalescing around uh some behavior then you know we can we can sh share and compare notes uh, and you know, work toward um, you know that broader understanding of you know how we're we're, we're solving this in uh, the cloud native ecosystem. Yeah, sounds good. Justin, anything else that that um, you, you wanted to add uh, about your sessions or about uh, DockerCon? Maybe not, Sarah. Anything else on DockerCon that you? Um... Yeah, um, I attended the open source sessions, and so that was like it was a packed room, um, and there were four different sessions to, about different open source solutions, and um, we heard from uh, Santiago about Intoto, and so that was a great presentation. And yes. Opa 
I think I, that was like the best explanation of what OPA does in policy that I've ever heard. Nice. Um, so I think they've really come a long way and, and it's um, really in more active use. Um, so those were the two, I, there were two others, Brandon do, or Justin, do you remember what they were or anybody else who was there? Well, one of them was supposed to be Justin Carmack, but he, he had to run, I think. Oh, I know one. One of them was that, that I thought was interesting is um, the fellow from Netflix did uh, is proposing that there be a bounty that is a security bounty where everybody gets together and creates an easy way for people to kind of have some kind of hosted containerized um, solution that people can hack at. So Ooh, like a um, the flag uh, for containers. Exactly. Nice. Um, I'll dig up the link because I tweeted it. Um, but that seemed like, I, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts about that. Um, but I, I thought that was neat. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, uh, his name is Michael Wardrop and his talk was also quite interesting for those who didn't attend it. So when they put the recordings up, I think it's probably worth a look at. Um, I think I was also muted before when you'd asked me about things with DockerCon, because I think, yeah. uh, so I, I also uh, talked to some people to tap them on the shoulder for future security assessments. Great. Um, and so we'll see how that goes, um, but there are at least some people that seem quite interested in potentially participating. Wonderful. Great. Um, what do you think of the the you know capture the container uh, exercise? Is you know um, is is it you know going to bear any meaningful fruit? Um, worth, worth our attention, or um, you know let it let it play out in the ecosystem? I think one thing it's hard to do is um, to set it up in a realistic enough way and. Um, so I'll be very interested to see. I think it's good. I mean, I think it's a target people should shoot at and it's sort of about time, but mm -hmm. I also, um, you know, like, let's say that someone goes and they set up Prometheus in a wildly insecure way because right. maybe Prometheus doesn't think security is part of what their project's supposed to be doing for right some on. reason. Then... You know, uh, I don't think they're going to be paying out bug bounties for that, even though you may see insecure Prometheus uh, setups all over the place mm -hmm. in cloud native. So I don't really know. Um, it's a little tricky. Right. Yeah. What what this could, could uh, you know, yeah, the opportunities for attack vectors, you know, probably, you know, not necessarily straight down the middle, of course. Um, and you know how this would differ from you know a research activity a targeted research activity um that would be tied to a particular um deployment environment you know i, I think the, the, the potential variance in deployment environment is going to be you know the most compelling um you know uh, framing for this and it's going to change the the outcomes greatly Based on how that's set up, how you know how how, how that that would be um, you know set up in a neutral way um, you know would be challenging and you know I'm not sure for example if um, you know Netflix would feel uncomfortable in completely replicating their um, operating environment right and, and adding the layers that that you know they would have um, to their environment. Like, yeah, so it's see. a question about whether it'd be realistic. Right. However, Netflix might be interested in, oh, I have a set of dependencies. Let me combine them together and point a whole bunch of, you know, hackers at it to see if they can find things so that I at least know that those are vetted. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that was kind of the idea to just like take a bunch of things that are commonly used together in the wild, right? By, and funded by companies who, um, you know, that can either put in dollars for the bounties or mm -hmm. engineers to help 
set up this infrastructure. And, right. um, and then they would have like their dependencies a little pre-vetted. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, of course, there was like some, I think there was some discussion about like, well, it's sort of, however you set up that container is then maybe different right. from. Yeah, yeah. I think that is the biggest challenge to, to you know, um, to, to getting this into a viable space where folks are like, okay, yeah, like, you know, even, even just in investing uh, money, you know, into, into the bounty, um, I would see that as a, a, a gating challenge for establishing that. Yeah, well, so we'll see what they do. Um, so I think it's a kind of thing to keep an eye on. So as people hear about it, it'd be great to have updates. Got it. So, um, you know, DockerCon, you know, we're, we're keeping it on our, um, you know, list, list of uh, events to, to go and, and attend and, and uh, draw in folks in the cloud data ecosystem. How big was it this year? No, I'm, I'm asking, it's completely irrelevant to that last statement. About 3,000 people attended. Okay. So then I thought I would talk a little bit about um, the security assessment stuff that um, well, we talked about it and Justin, please chime in. Um, but basically what we kicked off really are, we have this team of four of us <clears throat> who are going to do like sort of tag team this set of assessments. And we kind of looked at like, how many are we doing? Are we kicking off a process to do every CNCF project? And that would be a lot of work. <clears throat> and so we looked at this set of them, Spiffy, Spire, Open Policy Agents, Notary, Tough, and Falco were the ones that were called out in the um, uh, CNCF TOC docs around the security SIG. So these are the ones that they are um, calling out as ones that we need to be particularly mindful of. But it turns out that most of these have actually are way through the process. Mm. And um, Justin Capos has already reviewed uh, Spiffy and Spire before <laughs> we formalize the process. And really the process is based on his experience with those reviews. And then Notary and Tuff have been through the auditing process, which is much more rigorous. And then we made this list of um, ones that are particular assessment candidates um, where like we, I mean, actually OPA is already started now. Um, and then maybe Falco and Keycloak Key has expressed an interest in it. And Falco is another one where, you know, it's on the list, it hasn't had an assessment. So what we were thinking is, um, maybe we reach out to them, and if they're eager to do it, great, we start. If they're not, then we go to the next person on our list. Okay. And um, our thinking is that um, Justin suggested that we would have a resilient group if we had 10 security reviewers, which I think sounds great, because then no single person is overwhelmed with the amount of work it is, and any individual security review isn't that much work it's a commitment but for a very focused amount of time and so right. with um the idea being we wanted to do a specific set of these uh, before we reflected back on the process so we're capturing all these process improvement ideas and suggestions um and in the notes i linked i have a tag in github which is now called security assess it's called assessment dash process um which is um, for all the different things that we've collected. And unless something's getting in our way, we're not gonna actually make process improvements no. until we've done a set of these. And we'd said six or eight. So it turns out with 10 people and a, a particular rotation that we drew on the whiteboard or Justin drew on the whiteboard, um, then we can get through five assessments. So we kind of picked that number as we will do five assessments and then we'll reflect on, we'll have a retrospective. Okay. Um, and so that means that, it, um, so what I was thinking of doing is basically writing up our team 
currently, and then allowing them to people to PR themselves in as volunteers as our team expands. Right. And so we want to make sure that every team of three for these next five has at least one person who's been involved in these assessments before. So one of this group of four of us and at least one person who it has done a audit before. Right. And those could be the same people or not. Cause I think everybody except me has done audits before. I've been the recipient of audits many times. Got it. Um, little, oh. little point of process. Robert, when, when you get a second, would you mind uh, muting your phone? Sorry, just waiting for a moment to, to step in there. Thank you so much. Um, all so right. Dustin Capos, do, did I miss anything? Do you want to chime in there on the... Um, what we're doing? I think that sounds good. Um, I, I think one thing we also discussed a bit about was how this process actually goes early on. Uh, some of this were kind of inventing as it goes, but there was at least a thought about um, timelines in terms of what the person, you know, having someone who's the lead for it, take a quick read over the document, try to get clarifications within a day or so. Um, Ash, I think, probably got more clarifications from me than he expected. And I think also that it's a little unrealistic with what we were originally thinking to think that um, us getting them feedback like that in two days means they're just going to be able to turn that around right away. So, um, but as long as our part of the process and our part of the delay isn't more than two weeks, I think that's a pretty, we're, we're still getting people through this process pretty quickly, which is one of my bigger concerns is that we're, we don't want things to just drag on. Right. And I also put, just put in the notes, Justin, I made a, um, issue template with a checklist of the things that we talked about. Um, awesome. So then we could just have this template and we could go through nice. and check things off. So, um, so yeah. And so I thought we awesome. could use that for OPA and in Toto and we can make sure we're in Toto. We're kind of back checking, but we can make sure that we can do things. Do we, you know, and, and we, we, we probably don't know this, but do we have a sense of what the timeline uh, for that those 10 projects might be? Sorry, we said five assessments, not, not 10. Um, I, I think that, I mean, it depends a little bit on how quickly we get them, but I think sure. it takes uh, maybe three weeks calendar time to do them. And I'm also very leery of having these happen in an overlapping way okay. until we have a lot more certainty. Um, and I think like one thing really to Ash's credit is Ash has been very responsive. And I can certainly imagine a scenario where we go and we start an assessment for a group and it takes them two weeks to do the stuff that Ash did in a few days. So um, I don't know, but it, at least for these initial projects, I hope we can pick people that will be receptive and get through this in, in a couple months. So, you know, at a high level, it'll probably take us in terms of runtime, you know, through the end of the year. -ish. I hope not that long uh, to do the five, but right. I could see it happening if we have a lot of delays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And just give it, you know, to, to, to pad in some, you know, latency. Um, so, you know, we have an opportunity to present some of our findings uh, at um, KubeCon North America, right? So that is uh, running from uh, November 18th through 21st. So we that's- We should definitely meet it by then. Right? I think that, yeah, we should have yeah. five done. I think that would be a, a great opportunity to, um, you know, sort of share out what we're doing uh, by, by landing uh, as many as possible, right? I, I think we should shoot for, um, you know, all five, uh, you know, we have uh, two under our belt. So, uh, you know, that, that would probably give us, um, you know, being pessimistic, you know, three new ones, two old ones, uh, you know, a, a body of, of five to choose from. Um, 
there. And you know, I think that's going to be really, really interesting uh, and a great opportunity to potentially, you know, bring some other projects on, on stage. Can we get a spot during the keynote to talk about this? I was thinking the same thing. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that would be, um, yeah, that'd be really interesting. You know, get, getting, you know, getting this to uh, a level of, um, you know, to get to, to land the, the keynote position. Uh, I would say that the, um, the, the biggest gate is going to be the TOC and their buy-in. So, you know, if we can get a intermediate presentation to the TOC, proves to them that, that, that we're delivering uh, significant value and, and have them be the champion for us being, um, you know, at KubeCon, then, you know, that's, that's how I see us uh, being able to get on um, the keynote stage. But I, I think the message is the right one, right? You know, and the message, you know, with that would be, um, you know, uh, security is a, a first class concern in cloud native, right? I also think from their standpoint, just if they're really trying to have this delegated model with these official groups, then they want to, I think, highlight that these groups are first class right official delegated, you know, things. So I would think they should be very happy to have this happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, you know, a, a great discussion to tee up now with Chris A and, you know, just align with him uh, on, you know, what the, what, what messages that they're looking for uh, in um, at KubeCon North America and, you know, uh, I, I think there's something there that, that, that fits. I don't know that, you know, in terms of expectations, I would expect it to be, um, you know, more of a 15 minute presentation than, in, you know, a longer thing. You know, we, we'd get, you know, 15 minutes in the sun uh, on the keynote stage and then probably, um, you know, the longer session where we, you know, do the deeper dive. Makes sense. I, also, I also think that we, we still have some work to do on crafting, like what it is that, on helping the TOC um, kind of under like craft a message around this, right? right? Like, because, you know, like there are things that I'm here, like I had a great conversation with Liz where there are things that people ask me that she's like, no, why are, would you be doing that? And I'm like, cause mm -hmm. people are asking me to do it. Right. But, um, and they're not always voices from the TOC. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're, you know, companies that are involved in the CNCF, they're, right. you know, what, what's called these end user companies. And it's everything from, you know, uh, you know, a fairly naive stance of saying, oh, can I look to the CNCF to say, yes, this project's secure, right? Like, mm -hmm. nobody wants to be like, yeah, it's a binary. Right. Yes, that's, no. <laughs> that's, that's the truth, right? Um, all the way to the other end of the spectrum where it's just like, oh, well, we're just providing some information and mm -hmm. we're not making any assurance we're not saying anything really right. other than here are some docs here are some pointers you judge what you will right and then most people are in the middle somewhere where it's like well at the diff as somebody goes from sandbox to incubation to graduation they have a different level of maturity and we are saying some stuff about that but that middle ground and, and articulating like helping the TOC um, reason about what is it that the kinds of things, right, that maybe, you know, what, what companies want to hear, what open source projects feel comfortable asserting, um, what is, you know, what would be the strongest thing that is reasonable for a foundation to assert. Um, you know, I think that's, that's the kind of thing you want to go into a keynote with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think right now, there isn't a unified sense of right. what it is that the TOC wants to be able to assert about a security this year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think where what I've heard they're at is any sort of process that is better than we're at right now right, would right. be great. <laughs> and well, I don't think anybody wants to keynote, yeah, now we have a not sucky process. Right. 
<laughs> so, so that's where like, it's really, can we work with Liz and Joe and the, prepare our materials such that there is an alignment about what the TOC is comfortable serving. And that's, I think that sort of non-deterministic timeline, but I think the more that we are aligned, right? Cause we have stakeholders from a lot of different companies and a lot of right. different projects, the more that we can kind of represent, you know, a diverse group of security experts all think that this set, set of things is reasonable to say, then that can speed up that process. Yeah, this, this might be an opportunity to engage uh, Sarah Conway, you know, who runs marketing for um, the CNCF, aligning with whatever marketing message that they're, uh, uh, you know, considering for, um, you know, 2019, 2020, uh, and, you know, helping the TOC, you know, you know understand what, what, um, you know, their opportunities to influence that could be one of the ways that we get there. Um, so I think to, to, to get all of this, uh, set up and, and stacked in the right way, uh, to, to land that for, um, KubeCon in, in November, um, I think we need to select the, um, the next project very uh, carefully and look for, uh, you know, something that's going to, um, you know, really, you know, in Toto, uh, you know, obviously has their act together. Um, you know, OPA is, is such a well-known quantity in the ecosystem. Um, I'm, I'm going to wade right into it. Prometheus? Well, I think so. I, <laughs> do, they've like, already had do you an. Want to go there? Okay, yeah, they're they're graduated, they're right? Not. But we right. do have to resolve that open question, right? <laughs> I don't know if people, everybody's been on the Slack channel. Justin Cormack, do you want to talk a little bit about the Prometheus audit that you read? Yeah. So, the most of the security audits have been relatively straightforward, and issues have been found and resolved, and so on. Right. Prometheus was much more problematic than that because it ended in an entire disagreement about what the security scape for the project was between the assessors and Prometheus. And the, the compromise has been a small documentation change and all the findings from the report otherwise rejected. And that's not terribly satisfactory, I don't think, because there shouldn't be such a gap between what a project thinks and what an external security assessor thinks. And it's definitely a surprise potentially for users. And, and I think we need to find out more about, I mean, we, we've certainly had some users surprised about this, and it, but it's, it's, that shouldn't be, I mean, we shouldn't be going into security reviews with that much of a difference between ex expectations. And, and that's the kind of key area with that one. Yeah, I, I read that. It was very interesting. Thank you for pointing that out, by the way. Um, I was actually pretty shocked. Uh, was that review done before they received graduated status or after? Because it just kind of boggles my mind that the TOC would have voted I'm actually not 100% sure if it was before or after. I think it might have been before, but I'm, I couldn't confirm that hmm. right now. I, I mean, Prometheus effectively, at least according, okay, so at least according to the assessment, which albeit was written by the Cure 53 folks that did the, it was sort of their take on it, was basically they have a very non-standard security model where they don't view security as their problem. Hmm. It's effectively like the one, the one line summary of what, um, they effectively said about Prometheus. So I, 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 it just, you know, if we're re making recommendations to the TOC, I would think we as a group would almost certainly have recommended, hey, there's some really serious problems with Prometheus. Mm -hmm. If from a security standpoint, um, I, I don't know. I mean, should they just have a big warning on the front page of the project right. when you install it? Should you have to use dash dash insecure? to like add it to your Docker file or I don't like, I, I don't know. 
I like that dash dash and scare. So uh, you know that that seems like a political minefield. Um, <laughs> so maybe not, maybe not that one. Well, um, I think. Well, I think that we have to. We luckily we wouldn't need to assess it for a year mm -hmm. because the process that we've discussed and is not completely written down. I'm working on getting all the issues in. Is that there would be an assessment from our group, which is not an audit and then later when they're in incubating stage there would be an audit and then we would do some kind of yearly refresh where which may be as simple as a hey, project has anything changed please update your thing accept pull request right it, it could be very minor right or it could be like oh my gosh they've completely changed something right like let's have another review um and so, and that our, our focus would be to make sure that we've done that for all the things that provide security. And then maybe a few other projects that we think are big security influencers in some way, um, or set precedent in some way. Um, and so we have another year. Right. Yeah. Or, I think that's good. Responsible for that. But right. I think it's a great test case because part of this came up right. because I was saying to Justin Cormack, well, how it's going to be, it's sort of an outlier case that it, we would okay. really have a dis disagreement. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, maybe we would flag something that the project hadn't considered. Maybe they'd go back and look at that and do some homework, or we'd say it's okay for sandbox, but they should really put it on their roadmap. And Justin was like, well, actually. <laughs> and so I think that this is a great opportunity for us to, you know, highlight it, right? how would we, how do we think about this? And, and, um, and Justin Capos pointed out is we don't have to be, we, it's okay for us to be divided. It's okay for, you know, people within this group to say, well, actually, I think that's fine. As long as there's a, you know, appropriate documentation and other people to say, no, that's not fine. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be great to, um, at this point, it might have to be after KubeCon, but like to schedule a discussion, mm -hmm. right? Where we, everybody gets a chance to read this audit and we say, okay, well, if we were faced with this, how do we, how, what do we think as a group, right? Or as individuals, as what are the trade-offs? What are the ways to deal with this? Because I, I don't think Prometheus is alone amongst open source projects in having that stance. Yeah. And, you know, personally, I think if you have a, you know, if I have a JSON parsing library, I'm not sure it needs to have that much in it, right? But if it's a something that normally is running with an open connection to the internet, I have a different opinion. Yeah. And so I think like teasing that apart amongst ourselves and then coming to, with something more um, nuanced that's more an as if, right? Rather than calling out Prometheus specifically. Right. And I think talking to users as well, because mm -hmm. how, you know, are people using, are people finding this a problem in practice or not? I do. Are there common mitigations or not? Are, you know, are people concerned or not? So is, these are kind of import, important questions as well. You know, is there something else they're using to fix this problem that in conjunction with Prometheus? Sir, uh, I just want to, you know, for, for bookkeeping and, and follow up, um, when, you're, when you say after KubeCon, uh, are you considering after KubeCon Barcelona in, uh, in, in May? Yeah, I was just thinking that I think Barcelona is like in two weeks. So right, right. next week we're um, hearing from Ash and then probably, so I'm just saying from a scheduling standpoint, like we should, right. you know, early in June, I think it would be good to give everybody a reminder to read this and then like have a discussion. And then, um, and maybe we could, you know, we can decide and we can offline kind of brainstorm how to frame that like do we invite some prometheus users or do we have a do we talk about it more in the abstract and um what's a good way to frame that right so we end up with something where it would help us deal with such a situation if it were to happen again with another project because i think that's what we want to like that's what i want to have that we end up when we have completed all the security assessment docs and we've done five of these that any group of three, 
experts could go through this without running into political mind, landmines. Or right. Right. if they run into something, there would be, we would say, okay, well, if you run into something where you have a strong disagreement with the project, well, then this is what you do. Mm -hmm. You talk to the co-chairs or we bring it up in a group meeting or like we kind of navigate how would we handle such a situation? Right. Because I think that before we have just like, oh, three random volunteers, uh, <laughs> go forth, follow these dots. It's good to think through like, well, what if it didn't go smoothly? And I, I think that that's a framing that, that we can uh, bring to the Prometheus team. Um, Justin you know, Cormac, uh, did, did you get a sense that the, the uh, Prometheus team got super defensive? Or are we going to have sort of have to, have to talk them back off a cliff? No, I, I don't. I don't think. I mean, I. I um, I mean, I think the conversations happened in largely in private, so I don't think you have to do But I don't think it was about being defensive. It was really just, we, I think they just don't want that to be in scope because they don't want to work on that problem. They want to work on the problem they're trying to solve. Sure, sure. Um, which is about using metrics effectively and not about mm -hmm. securing metrics, I guess. And, right. um um but you know and but sometimes i mean sometimes you can't work on one problem without working on another right. one. <laughs> and sometimes you can i mean i think you know and um yeah, that's a, yeah, there's lots of possible resolutions to sure. it sure okay um, yeah, so, uh, you know, if, um, if we can have a conversation with the Prometheus team, uh, just to discuss, you know, how would we handle it? What are the, some of the things that we're looking at and have a conversation with them now, um, that would give them potentially a year before they're coming to us. Right. So we can have a, you know, initial conversation and, um, you know, have the, you know, shared outcome uh, you know, be, you know, what, what would you expect in, you know, when it uh, comes up to your time and, you know, uh, we can also look for, uh, opportunities in this, uh, because we have tended to, uh, index on, uh, groups that, you know, think of security first, uh, we can, you know, use this as an opportunity to, you know, take the complete opposite, uh, tack where, um, we have a, a group that is like not at all uh, thinking of that and, and look at ways that we can, um, you know, in our, you know, that, 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 uh, that um, landscape view or, you know, our other tooling that, you know, can help them uh, get to, um, you know, an expectation of security as a sensible default. Although I think that the other tack that is to have that conversation in the abstract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before we have it with Prometheus. Okay. Because I think that there, we should sketch out when, you know, like we should like have the discussion of what, like I think Intoto has done a good job of saying, here's a thing that we don't do. Right on. You should do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> before you use Intoto, right? Right. And right. so mm -hmm. um, I think we should have a discussion of like, is that okay? But, you know, in that case, I think we're converging to it. That is okay, right? Like, so could this be addressed with documentation or must they go build something? Mm -hmm. Or maybe our group knows something that could be a little more plug and play that we right. put front and center or could bundle with them or like, I don't know what. And under what what types of projects would we find this to be something important? But because I think that like talking about it more in the abstract, like I, I'm at least interested in that conversation. I don't know how right. I feel. Right. Okay. Um, I, also, I mean, arguably from the CNCF point of view, that security audit was basically a waste of money. Right. And you know, there's actually sure. a cost to doing this where. Sure. Um, For sure. <laughs> to have the project say, well, we don't do security. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not our problem. Right. Yikes. For sure. Okay. Uh, but that's exactly the kind of thing that I think these assessments can flesh out, right? Right. Um, all right. So uh, again, I, I think that's going to, you know, we're going to have to spend some time uh, really sort of assessing the next, next ass assessment. Uh, assessment. Um, well, I think that the next assessment, 
Like, I think we need to invite Falco because they're on the CNCF okay. list. We can check in with Liz and see if she, that list was just, I don't think that list was come up with randomly. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are like one of the things that were listed that the SIG security Great. should be, you know, shepherding. And mm -hmm. I don't think, to my knowledge, they haven't done an audit or had an assessment. So I no. think an outreach to them because they're on the list, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and then key, yeah, I think the other one is Key Cloak, which seems like a their incoming project that has requested an assessment. And so I think those seem like valid next ones. And then we just have to brainstorm what would be the fifth or the sixth, if it turns out Falco's not quite ready for one in this time frame. Right, we had um, Michael Ducey come and present back in April of 2018 on uh, Falco. Oh, we'll have to repeat that. Right, Here, I'll drop the link into the chat. So yeah, uh, carrying forward Falco, um, you know, would be, um, would be interesting. You know, I, I expect Falco and Key Cloak, uh, just by the name Key Cloak, sounds like they, um, you know, are working, you know, in the security space and they're gonna uh, have uh, security mindedness uh, front and center. Um, so look, looking for the opportunities that where, uh, you know, folks, you know, may, maybe be delivering a solution that's not, um, you know, security centric. Um, you know, would would be good to begin to to frame that discussion with Prometheus. But Falco, Falco makes a, a lot of sense, and um, you know, I, I think that's a, a a good place for us to start with with the next the next assessment. And you know, I would expect that um, you know Falco. Uh, you know, we, we would have uh, both in total, uh, you know, the two assessments in total and OPA um, that we can, uh, you know, package up into a presentation that we're sharing at, um, at a TOC meeting and, um, you know, potentially, uh, you know, list out the short list of, um, of these five assessments. That would be, uh, a, a, you know, something valuable for the TOC. Okay, um, so we have uh, an action item uh, over the coming week to uh, kick off the presentation. Um, you know, just given, given that future target of uh, presenting to the TOC, what do you think if you know, we anchor our um, you know, KubeCon Bar Barcelona around some of this you know, assessment work? rather than, you know, rehashing, um, you know, do, do, do you think that would be a good presentation to share, uh, you know, in, in, in Barcelona and then, you know, follow up as uh, part of the TOC meeting? So we're working out the kinks on that. You mean for the, so we have a intro presentation, we have a deep dive. And then Justin Cormack has another presentation about the security assessment Got it. process, which I don't know whether you're going to cover what you did before we usurped your process and did this? Um, I haven't, I think, I mean, I'm, I can definitely, I, I, I can't remember exactly how it fits timing wise in terms of the our, our, our sessions, because I can definitely refer to, I, I definitely want to talk about loading a bit, but if there's, if, if I can point people at a session that's coming up or. Right rather than one they've just missed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you drop your session into the... Um, uh, it's, I think it's two o'clock on... Uh, um, but from a content perspective, I think that like we can have the SIG talk more about like the, the meta process, right? Like right, how we're right. picking projects and like our security assessment team and kind of have a call for like, hey, if this is the kind of thing you do or want to learn how to do, right. come join our team. And then I think that um, we should, we need to mention like the policy work and the landscape work and the different projects for the like intro thing, I think. And then the deep dive 
um, Justin Kapos is going to talk about, I guess, the security assessment stuff, and right. then, um, Howard is going to present something about policy. Great. Um, but we probably should come up with some slides soon. Right, and and uh, you know, I I would also uh, you know take the opportunity to leverage some of the sort of shared content between the three, right? Um, oh yeah, absolutely. The uh, like. I, I don't think we need to feel like we need to, you know, create, you know, unique novel content for each one that they're, you know, all engagement points. Uh, you know, this is one of the, um, you know, most visible uh, activities that we have. And, you know, with that, the policy uh, white paper and, you know, if we have, um, you know, uh, some, I, I, I think the, the other uh, white paper, it's probably too early to even, uh, you know, bring it into the, the discussion. You know, we can well, I, think what we, I think what we have is an outline, right? right. We, I think we can refine it a little bit. Be like, we're going to have an, a white paper that covers these things. Nice. Um, okay. Right. Join, right. Like, right. We, we have a very rough one that, like, we just kind of all need to chime in a little bit mm -hmm. after we get this assessment stuff out of underway. Right. But, um, but yeah, we basically we're, if we can nail the charter this week, which I think we're on track for, at least our part of it will be will be like, well, yeah, we're just responding to feedback. Then um, uh, JJ can I can can like kind of refocus on the white paper to the point of, and then we can you know get everybody's feedback on an outline. And that kind of it addresses kind of it's sort of analogous to the charter, and it's another way of looking at the scope of the group. Mm -hmm. okay. I think it's more interesting to read. Sorry, my, my talk's actually after the deep dive. Okay. So you could tee up uh, in, you know, we could talk to, uh, you know, to Sarah's point about the meta, uh, and then, um, you know, you would be able, we would be able to tee up, um, you know, and, and if you want to, you know, a deep dive into the actual output of the assessment and how that works, uh, come to, to Justin's um, talk for that. That's great. So, um, you know, I, I think amongst the, the presentations, we're going to have, you know, a slide or so about, you know, our, our chartering as security and, you know, uh, a brief mention of the history. Um, we'll tee up the, um, the, the white paper. Um, and, you know, I, I think we can have uh, sort of um, in the intro, the same sort of uh, rundown, uh, charter, white paper, policy white paper, uh, and then security assessment, and then, you know, go a little bit deeper in the deep dive. You know, go deeper in the policy, go deeper in the assessment. Same basic uh, scaffolding. Okay. And I think we're, we're probably out of time. Any, anything else that we, yes, we are out of time. Thank you for the, the call out. Uh, is there anything else in, that we should be discussing? A coupon? Right, right. Um, I think what we should do is mm. through our open issues and see if there's anything we missed. You know what this is a good opportunity for, you know, as we present assessment, uh, this could be a, a moment where we can call to action uh, folks to, um, you know, to join us for these assessments. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, I think that like, what I'd like is, and if anybody can help with this, and thanks Brendan for chiming in on the repo, like our repo and the issues list should be the place that people can say, I want to help with this. Nice. Like it should be really accessible for people to know what it is this group is doing, who is leading what, um, you know, what things are underway and have things in a state where they don't have to be finished, but it mm -hmm. has to be like, oh, I could review that or this is not being worked on. Great. Um, and so if we can think about ways that we can arrange the issues to be appropriately tagged or what have you um, and link from the readme, I think that'd be great. Great. Yeah. Okay. That that's uh, that's a you know 
ending slide there, right? <laughs> Come uh, submit an issue to the repo. We'd love to have an assessment. We'd love to have you join us uh, in our sessions. Um, cool. Great. Good stuff. All right. Well, uh, uh, Ash, we'll get you uh, lined up for next week. Uh, Sarah, you, you mentioned someone else might uh, have a presentation with that. I want to make sure I um, land that in the agenda. Well, so OPA is just, wait, no, sorry. Was there anything besides OPA? I think we need to get in toto done. Okay. OPA on the schedule that we think that we can achieve before we talk to somebody else. Because right now we have been, we have not yet landed a single assessment. So let's not pipeline them at the risk right. of not effectively executing. So can we, can we stagger, um, you know, next week, uh, OPA presentation uh, and uh, in total follow-up or do we have to do in total? I don't think we need follow. to have any more meetings about in total. Okay. Okay, okay. We, like if it turns out that you know Liz and Joe open up a bunch of questions mm -hmm. that cause us to have like some new content that sure. this group hasn't discussed before, then maybe we'd schedule something. But um, right now, I think that you know we'll just go through and we'll do it async, right? We'll have you know we'll, we'll have like little light sharing here as long yeah. as there isn't anything anything that's radically new. But you know that could come up. Oh. Um, but uh, I think right now they've done the presentation at least once probably a couple times oh. <laughs> um, and then uh, we'll circle around on the uh, the overview and the additional material great all right so o opa is um you know the primary activity we'll be focusing our time on that and you know follow-up discussion you know making sure we have you know my, my worry was you know making sure we had enough time uh, to provide feedback and you know do, do that during the session yeah i cool. think that we should keep like i think at least for starters, we should give a whole session where the presentation is designed to kind of cue up the conversation and everybody who's attending is encouraged to, like, we hope that most, if not all of the uh, group has read the, the doc, the write-up before, yeah. so that we all have a fruitful conversation. Great. All right, we have a game plan. See you all, uh, you know, this time, uh, same time uh, next Wednesday, the fifteenth. Uh, Later. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye.